take your Bibles, if you didn't have a chance to put the little marker in, and open it up to Proverbs chapter 3. I said this morning, you've heard the little bedtime uh, poem that they had, early to bed, early to rise, makes a man wealthy, healthy, wealthy, and wise. There's no truth to that. Uh, so much emphasis on these three things today, health, for example, fitness and diet. It, it doesn't matter what you turn on. There's some gal or some guy, they've done all their life working out, and they're showing you what this diet will do for you. They're showing you what this rubber band will do for you. They never used it in their life. And so everything seems to be centered around health. Take our pills. Boy, you'll live. I got a whole stack of pills. I don't even take them. And then the second one is wealth, secular and religious. In fact, pick any business. Men are bent on getting the money. They want to make as much money. And I really get tired of that in our business. These guys, that, well, I was doing a meeting in southern Colorado, and another denomination was there. He had the, the, uh, the, um, oh, the, the assembly hall, the, the place downtown, probably seated four or five, six hundred and we were meeting in the church, and they, uh, some people from the church went, and he, uh, he told from the platform, he said, I'm raising the money to buy a new camper for my wife and I, a new uh, motorhome. He says, we travel, and I want you folks to pay for it. So we're going to head to chicken buckets. He got all those buckets. He said, we're going to pass these buckets, and they'll take that out and count it, and we'll see how you do on the first offering. And so they came back in, and they sang till they got done, and they came out to the and she, he said, this doesn't cut it. He said, you can do a lot more than that. Pass those buckets again. He took that offering three or four times, and those fools sat there and stuck money in the buckets till finally he said, well, it isn't quite enough to buy it all, but I can put the down payment, and the next church can pay the difference. I wouldn't have the nerve to do something like that. By the way, I could know I'm now teasing. Uh, the money, and it, same in the secular world. You have these people that make billions of dollars, and I don't know why it is most of them are liberal. That guy Soros, he just gave uh, $122 million to, uh, to to support the Democratic promotion for Biden. He's going to have to come up more money than that. Uh, hide Biden more than you're hiding him, I guess. He health, wealth, and the third one is wisdom. And I'd be the first to tell you, secular people have wisdom. There are people that have multiple degrees and have really studied. They know their subject. There's only one problem. It's without God. What good is wisdom without God? And the whole thing comes out of, uh, I see, where did I want for that? Uh, Second Timothy, I'll just show you this verse real quick. Second Timothy chapter 3, and let me just read a little bit of this. I'll just tell you about it mostly. Second Timothy chapter 3, the wisdom of this world, uh, verse number 1, this know also in the last days perilous times will come. There are 19 things labeled here, named in the down to verse 5, and all of them have to do with this, smarts, what you know. Men will be lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud. There are 19 of them. The scary one is verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power of their... That's human wisdom, religious wisdom, and it isn't worth anything. It won't get you anywhere. Well, a couple of side verses this before we go back to Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10.31, and I usually just quote this. Let me get myself started. And then I'll quote it. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 31. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. There's the answer. It's not in man's idea of health and wealth and wisdom. It's in your relationship with God. Here, here's another verse uh, that goes with that. Uh, let's see, Colossians 3.23. You know, I hadn't really noticed this verse. Uh, being so closely related, uh, Colossians 3 and verse 23 says, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not unto men. What you, what you get in health, wealth, and wisdom, 
do it for God. Do it to glorify the Lord. And so we'll change that. Here's the outline. How, how does a Christian get health, wealth, and wisdom? Well, write down number one. To be healthy is in Proverbs 3, verses 1 through 8. And put in parentheses behind that, practice the law. Now, we know we're not Jews, and we're not under the Jewish command concerning the law, but the word law fits the word of God. Practice what's written in the Bible. And then drop down that second indent and write down how to be wealthy. It's in verse 9 through 12 of Proverbs chapter 3. Pay the tithe, more than the tithe. Give God his dues out of what you take in, and you'll be wealthy. And then how about wisdom? Same chapter, verses 13 through 18, how to be wise. Pay the tithe, practice the law, pursue wisdom. Go after wisdom, and you'll catch wisdom. God put it so that you can have it if you want it, and this is the book you get it from. The book of Proverbs, the only word mentioned aside from articles and such things, in every chapter is the word wisdom. And most chapters it's mentioned multiple times. In fact, one whole chapter, eight, is devoted entirely to wisdom. Every verse is about wisdom. And then chapter nine tells you the seven pillars of wisdom that you're supposed to build your house with. And sure enough, in Proverbs, there are seven keys to wisdom, the seven pillars of wisdom. What a wonderful thing. So here it is. To be healthy, chapter three, verses one through eight, practice the law. To be wealthy, chapter 3, verses 9 through 12, pay the tithe. To be wise, chapter 3, verses 13 through 18, pursue wisdom. Go after it. Seek it with your heart. Father, a uh, good little message tonight to give us some encouragement. There, there's not a lot we can do. We just don't seem to have the, the wherewithal to figure it out on our own of how to improve these various areas of our life. But these are three vital areas and you've told us what we need to know how to have health wealth and wisdom right here in one chapter of proverbs bless the message to our hearts use we thank you in jesus name amen to be healthy look at it verse one through eight my son forget not my law but let thine heart keep my commandments watch it for length of days and long life and peace Shall they add to thee, to thee? Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them upon thy neck. Write them upon the tables of thine heart. So shalt thou found favor and great understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Verse 8. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bone. Now, I'm, what I'm going to tell you now, I don't totally understand. But I have a lot of My son has that library now. Uh, I gave him my library years ago uh, when I went into evangelism. I've gained uh, quite a few books, but I had the books of the old masters written hundreds of years ago. And you know, back there in 1908, the average age of man on the earth was 47 years. 47 years, man. Some of us are close to doubling that, you know. Uh, what, what may, and you know, the, the only people you read of that had long life were writers, poets, and preachers, and, and teachers. Educated people had longer lives. And that's been true down through you. you. When you start naming wisdom, you think of people like Albert Einstein. He, he, lived, he looked older than he was, but he was a white-haired man and all uh, crippled. I think he was only like 75 or something like that. Uh, but his age, you could see he had lived a long time. So uh, being healthy was a common thing for this age that we live in, but back then, the healthy people lived 40, 50 years. It's an amazing thing. When in the Bible, during their time, it still said the age will be 70 years, and if by reason of strength, 80. And that never came into effect until 
other than for the areas I mentioned until 50, 75 years ago that people could. Now, they're sure as you get somebody lives to be 115 to get the average. A lot of them die when they're younger from COVID-19 and uh, <laughs> things as that. But to be healthy, practice the law. That's what it said. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. And the answer, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. You can't go wrong. Even if you died younger, you couldn't go wrong by keeping and knowing God's law, the Bible. Uh, there are three things about that. In verse 1 and 2, keep it. My son, uh, forsake not the law, so you keep it, and that'll give you health. Romans 10.10 10 talks about that uh, from the heart. Matthew 22.37. And then secondly, bind it in verse 3 and 4. Uh, bind them upon thy neck. Now remember we spoke on this the other day. They were, maybe that was in Sunday school. They're called phylacteries. Jews even today wear phylacteries. I was in a Jewish hospital years ago wiring the building for some sound equipment that we sold. And I was going through the floors and in the elevator shafts and different places, and I'd end up in a room. I'd have to knock a hole in the wall, pull the wires through, put a box there. And every room I walked in had a cocoon, for lack of another word, on the side of the door. Some places above the door. Little thing that had a, it almost looked like a, a baby's a basket that women carried on their back. It had a little door on it. And, and I'm in that hospital every day for months. I kept looking. Well, I went in a room and the little box was open. Somebody else must have thought of it too. So I thought, nobody's looking. I want to see what that is. So I opened, little, and the minute I did, it fell off the wall. And there it is. <laughs> there it is. And it came apart. Oh, man, I, I'm picking it up and trying. And it was a scroll. And it unwound. And it was probably about that long and this wide. It all rolled up. And I opened it up, and it was Hebrew whichever way you were going to look at it. I, and all I could think of was I broke it. So I rolled that thing back up, and I turned around, and there's a, a, an attendant standing there looking at me. I said, it fell off the wall, and I'm just trying to put it back. So I did a little study on phylactery is what that little box is called. And if you're a, if you're a, a practicing Jew, you wear those. You find a Jew with his little flat hat and his uh, four locks, four corners of his head, and somewhere on him will be a phylactery. Usually you'll see it in a box on his hand and leather straps, black, going up his arms on either side. If he's a real devout Jew, it'll be on his forehead right between his eyes, and it'll be tied around his head, and it'll have a piece of scripture in it. Now, I don't know why you need to wear it on the outside. Duh, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. You don't need a phylactery. You have one. It's in your heart. Memorize God's word. Keep it. Bind it. The illustration here would be memorizing it. Psalm 119.11 that I just quoted. And then thirdly, trust it. Five and six. It's one thing to know scripture. I know people that know all kinds of scripture. They know more live it than you could fly. It's another thing to trust scripture. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Where do we acknowledge him? In his word. God tells you something in the Bible, believe it. Be willing to stand for it. In this day we live in with this COVID thing. You know, Peter withstood Israel and said, it would be better to obey God rather than man. And we're not going to do what you want us to do. The best example is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They told the king, uh, you, you, he said, you do that, I'm going to make that furnace seven times hotter than it's ever been, and I'm going to put you in it. And they said, it matters not to us what you do, because we're going to obey the Lord. You just have a ball. That's kind of the Riley version, but it's better than most of the other version. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. You want to be healthy? Just keep that. Uh, I taught in Sunday school this morning. I've been very neglectful of this. We're very remiss here about taking time to uh, teach our folks and each of us and give everyone opportunity to memorize some more scriptures. 
If I were to ask, and I never would, but if I were to ask, answer in your own mind, how many verses do you really know? If you sit down with a pencil, how many could you write out? Listen, with address, correct verse, and punctuation. Address is uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Uh, what, how many do you actually know? Do you have any idea? The Bible said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And we have Christians everywhere running around, can get victory over sin. Get, find a verse that meets the need of that sin and memorize it. Thy word have I hid in my heart. We've got to get back to this. We need to be putting verses down. You put them on a three by five, print it on one side, the address real big on the other, lay it on a dashboard. Do not look at it while you're driving. But when you come to a red light, don't do it on a motorcycle either. When you come to a red light, pick it up. Look at the address and quote as much as you can. Oh, let me just pick some. Uh, what was the one I had a minute ago? Uh, but godliness with contentment is great gain for you, uh, for you uh, turn it over. Uh, godliness with contentment is great gain. For you brought nothing in this world, it's certain you can take nothing out. Having food and raiment, be there with content. Lay it back down. Read the location again, First Timothy 6, 6 through 8. Lay it back down. Next slide, do it again. Next slide, do it again. Listen, here's the key. The, third, the first time you can quote it without turning the card over, get off of the road and quote it three more times. And it's yours for the rest of your life. I didn't make that up. I learned it from a very wise man. And that's how you memorize scripture. Once you have it, put it away. Lock it in your heart. And years later, I'll be preaching and all of a sudden here I am quoting a verse I haven't looked at for 40 years. Where'd I get it? Thy word have I hid in my heart. Shame on us that we've done this. And we wonder why we're not healthy. There is a definite connection between your health and your relationship with your Bible. Say, come on, preacher, you're stretching it. You heard me read it. Look how it started. Forget not the law for length of day and long life with peace shall they add to thee. Uh, later on, uh, verse 7, uh, in, in all thy ways acknowledge him, verse 6, uh, it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bone. You can't separate the Bible from your health. Man, spend some time with the word of God. Let's see what else I might have had in there uh, that I would want to share with that. Unconfessed sin is a major part of this. You'll never memorize scripture when you have unconfessed sin in your life because God won't hear you. And God's the one, the Holy Spirit's the one that helps navigate you through the memory of scripture. And if you're hiding a sin, don't bother because the Holy Spirit's not going to help you. Notice the second one, verses 9 through 12, a shorter section. How to be wealthy. Pay the tithe. Where's this written in the Old Testament? Verse 9 through 12. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. The first fruit is the tithe. It's 10%. That's what the first fruit. The wave offering that was brought to God represented the one-tenth you were going to take out of that field and turn in at the church, uh, at the temple, and give it to the Lord. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and the presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary in his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son, in whom he delights. You can't separate the correction from the tithe. You, you're going uh, to pay the tithe. I have people say, I can't afford the tithe. Oh, you're paying it. You had a dentist bill you didn't plan on. You blew a tire you didn't count on. Your washer went out. You, do you ever sit down? Somebody that doesn't give. Now, that happens to all of us. But I guarantee you it happens to people that don't tithe. You could write down what you should be giving, and you can add up what God took away from you. You can't spend God's tithe. He'll take it away from you. And all of a sudden you say, man, what, what, how come all these problems are on me? Duh. Be over this very thing, there are three things here. First of all, there's a procedure found in verse 9. 
It's an honorable thing. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits. Uh, uh, let me see what else I had with that. Uh, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Philippians 4.16. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. When's God, God going to do that? When you pay the tithe. When you're, I, I've had people over the years, I couldn't tell you how many people learned to tithe under my ministry. And one guy in particular, I've had this happen with a number of guys who came up, and I've told you about him. Uh, what's teething? I said, what? What's teething in the Bible? I'm thinking of a pacifier, that's, Show me the verse. I said, that's pronounced tithing. He said, what's tithing? I said, 10% of everything you make belongs to God. He looked at me and said, you got to be kidding. He said, preacher, by the time I add up all my bills, I don't have anything left. I said, I'm going to tell you the answer. Hold your hands like you're holding them. Okay? Now, turn it over. Put the tithe on the bottom, but now turn it over and pay it from here down. And you pay God first, you'll always have enough to take care of your bills. Now, one way that'll happen, you'll learn order and you'll learn responsibility and you'll remove a lot of those things in there that are unnecessary. Guys will say to me, boy, preacher, I'd like to put some money in the offering, but we can't afford it. Today, out on a whim, you look at your wife. Oh, I suppose some of you guys wouldn't do this. Uh, I do. I look at Joyce and say, how'd you like to go out to eat? I'll take you out. Let's go over to Applebee's. Man, they've got a special on. And for 20 bucks a piece, we can get this big meal. We'll have a bunch to take home. And by the time I stick a $10 tip with that, I spent $50. And the same guy standing there and said, boy, I can't put anything in the offering plate. And that old boy said, well, okay. So he started giving $20. I won't bore you. I've told you this story a lot of times. Four times he did that. He was a janitor at IBM halfway between Boulder and Longmont at the big plant out there. A janitor, he took some classes at IBM. He got moved up into one of the production shops. He took some classes on management. He, he'd come in and say, preacher, you won't believe it. They, they fired the head janitor and they gave me the job. He said, you know how much the raise is? I said, how much? He said, what I start tithing. And I said, well, now you got more. Oh, no, no, he said, I'm giving that to God. You know how bad it bothers me that Denny DeVries, you're in heaven today, Denny. I was at your funeral, you dirty skunk. He moved up so far, he ended up on the vice president list of IBM in California. When he retired, younger than me, moved back here and built a big old house out by Longmont. Was a member of the First Baptist Church of Longmont, played on the softball team. Guess where he learned all that? Turn it over. Just put it first, man. Give to God. The procedure is to give God his part and don't worry about the rest of it. Here's the promise in verse 10. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and the wine presses burst out with new wine. That word new on there is telling you it's grape juice. That's why you don't put grape juice in a used barrel because it's got fermentation in the sack or in the barrel. You put the new wine in there, in eight days it's going to be wine. It's going to be fermented. So new wine goes in a new barrel. Here it is. The, the promise, you give and it will be given to you. How about Ecclesiastes 11.1? 1? I think I just kind of borrowed that verse, didn't I? Cast thy bread upon the water, for thou shalt find it after many days. I live with that verse. We quit tithing. We've been married uh, 56 years. Uh, we, we quit tithing two, three days after we were married. I've never tithed in all that time. We've given beyond the tithe and beyond the tithe. You cannot outgive God. Either way, my God shall supply all your needs. Now, a lot of times what you're calling needs aren't needs, they're wants. But if you're fair to what your needs are, God will supply it. And then God will make men give you your wants. Say, come on, preacher, you don't believe that. Sure I do. The Bible says, given it shall be given to you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, still overflowing the cup. Don't quit. So shall men give to your bosom. 
When you go beyond the tithe and you give and you, you don't give till it hurts, you give because it's a blessing of God and God's going to give it back to you. He'll make men. That's what happened to Denny, that dirty rat. Every time he turned around, they gave him a bigger job till finally he's, when he's making big money, he goes to California. Oh, man, I could have shot the guy. But it's a promise from God. And incidentally, in case you want to say, and that's what I get, oh, the tithe is in the Old Testament. Is that right? In the law? Isn't that funny? The guy through whom the law came is in Genesis chapter 20. Let me show him real quick. The Jews weren't there yet. This is the head of the Jews, and his name is Abraham. And in chapter 20, Abraham brought the, uh, the, the went out and captured you know the story. He brought them, everybody back. And uh, let's see, I'm looking for a particular verse here. Let me, uh, let me see where I had it written down. Uh, there it is, Genesis 14. I said 20. I don't know why I did that. Genesis 14 at verse number... Dan, 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 dan. I'm almost there. 14, 19. He said... Uh, uh, and he and Melchizedek king of Salem brought bread and wine. He was a priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him. He said, Blessed be Abraham, the Most High God of heaven and earth. And and let's see, I need the verse where it says, Abraham gave him tithe of all. Why did I not write down the verse that goes with that? Uh, he, he, this is tithe. This before Abraham ever became Israel. He gave the tithe of all the stuff that he took back. He said, let the soldiers, 19 men with him, let them take a blessing out of it and, and give the tithe to the Lord. And the rest of the tithe of it went to the Lord. You can't outgive God. And the tithe is where you start. Oh, uh, Tom Williams, great evangelist. Tom used to say, you, you start tithing and you're bragging. Why don't you quit begging, bragging? All you did is stop robbing God. Malachi says, wherein would a man rob God? In tithes and offerings. He said, if you start tithing, all you did is quit robbing God. Just turn it over. Man, give it. There's a, there's a procedure. There's a promise. Why do you stuck, Moses stuck 11 and 12 in there? Because there's a punishment for not learning it. I told it to you a minute ago, so I won't labor the point. You're going to give it. If you don't want to put it in a plate, if you don't want to give it joyfully, hilariously, the Bible said, that's a word for laughter. You laugh when you give a God, you give it to God because you know you're giving it out of love for him and you want to bless God. You can't out give God. He'll turn right around and give that back to you. And, and what a wonderful thing. But if you won't give it, verse 11, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, need to be weary in his correction. Verse 11 and 12 go with 9 and 10. They're all in one part. This isn't written about something else. Uh, For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as the father the son in whom he delighteth. God's going to teach you how to give. And you just can't outgive God. How do you be healthy? Practice the law. How are you wealthy? Pay the tithe. Oh, there's some other verses. Let me think of that one real quick. Yeah, I got a little time. Uh, the fellow, I use him a lot. The rich man, he's mentioned four times. I think it's all the same guy. And in one of the places he's mentioned, his barns are full. He said, what am I going to do? You can almost picture God looking at him and saying, yeah, what are you going to do? I know what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns. I'll big build, build bigger barns. And I'll be able to hold more grain and more product. And then I'll say to my soul, God said, you what? I'll say to my soul, eat, drink, and be merry. God looked at him and said, that's not why you're building bigger barns. He's going to be a drunk. He's going to bring everything in and have a big party. And you, you do that, don't you blame it on God. Don't you dare attach it to your soul. If he had said, I'll say to my flesh, that verse wouldn't be in the Bible. He dared to equate his riches and the use of them in a wrong way to God. I'll say to my soul, soul, take thine ease. God said, no, you won't. You want to see him later? Later on, he, uh, I stomped, didn't I? Did it make it go offline? Uh, uh, later on, he's the guy sitting there with, Lazar- with uh, Lazarus under his table. 
Lazarus died and was carried into Abraham's bosom. And then all it says about the, here's the epitaph of the rich man. And the rich man also died. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. You, there's punishment here to teach a Christian to do what's right. You want to keep losing everything? Go ahead and spend it. God will teach you a lesson. How do you get wisdom? 13 through 18. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. Now, you know, every time something comes, uh, Ruby and Sandra, I'm telling you this, Joyce was here, I'd be looking at her. Every time something comes out good in the Bible, God calls it she. Do you ever notice that? Now look, happy is the man that findeth wisdom. The merchandise is better than the merchandise of silver. She is more precious than rubies, wisdom. Now all of a sudden it's a woman. And all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared to her. Length of days is in wisdom's right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her way are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. And that uh, ends in verse 18. I didn't read. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. Happy is everyone that retaineth her. Who is she? Wisdom. To find here is to search for. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. What does that tell you? He went looking for it. He, he wanted to find it. Where do you find wisdom? You pursue it in the Bible. Guess the best place to start? Right here. Go through Proverbs with a highlighter. And you'll find my Bible is marked everywhere the word wisdom is used. Highlight it with yellow or orange or green. Make sure it's always the same color. And then come back and read all those verses in context. And look what wisdom has to tell you. Wisdom, you pursue it from God's word. First of all, you pursue the pleasure of it. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. I've, I've appreciated God for the fact over my years, I, I have a good education. I have quite a few years of education. I've always been able to have around me people that are wise, that can figure out things. I can't know everything, and I don't want to know everything, but I always have had people around me that have wisdom. And man, that, that saves you so much trouble. You know, now I know you guys, you, all you gotta do is pick up a, a little brown box. But the little brown box isn't near as good as a good friend that has wisdom. Olin's forever saying, yeah, tell me this or that. And he looks at it. It told me, yeah, it's it. You can't say he and you can't say she. You can say it. And it's all stored in that box somewhere. There isn't anything like the pleasure of having a good friend who has wisdom. Don't get around people that draw you down. Get around people that lift you up. They help you in learning more. And it's a pleasure to have friends like that. Look at verse 14 and 50. It's not only the pleasure of, but the preciousness of. For the merchandise of it, wisdom, is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. There's the she. She's more precious than rubies, and in all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared to her. You have to get it in your mind. To be smart, to know wise things is of great value to you, and it will help you in your well, in your uh, wisdom, and your health, and, and your uh, wealth. It's one of the three that builds you up when you're wise. It's fun to be around people that study, people that take the time to learn. They don't rely on something else. They know it in their heart, uh, with the heart. Uh, man does these things so it's hidden in the heart it's pleasure it's precious and it leads you on a path that is one you ought to want to go on the pathway of wisdom is 16 through 18 length of days and long life is in her left hand uh, riches and in her left hand riches and honor her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace she is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. And happy is everyone that retaineth her. It's wisdom. Man, read books. Study things. Learn things. 
you, you have to develop in your mind a certain amount of, it used to be called in the old days, a photographic memory. I have a photographic memory. As I get older, I'm sure, man, the, the uh, films are getting awful feeble anymore. But learn, you practice memorizing verses and keeping them in the right place. And when you need them, God, the Holy Spirit, bring them up just like that. Other things that you need to know, you maybe don't want to know all the details because you're not doing that for life. But find the keys that lead you to the place to know wise things that are around you. Look at chapter 8. I want to finish here. Proverbs chapter 8. Every verse in chapter 8 is about wisdom. I'm just going to read a few. Verse 1. Doth not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her, verse, her voice? She standeth on the top of the high places, by the way of the place of the paths. What does she do there? She cries at the gate, at the entering of the city, at the coming at the door. Unto you, O men, I call. My voice is to the Son of Man. Oh, you simple, understand wisdom, and you fools, be ye as under of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be rich of right things. My mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness and abomination to my lips. All the way down through here, receive my instruction, verse 10, and not silver, knowledge rather than gold. Wisdom is better than rubies. There it is again. The fear of the Lord, verse 33, is to, is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth. Counsel is mine, uh, is mine, and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign. Princes, there of uh, decree justice. By my, uh, uh, by me, princes rule and nobles, all the judges of the earth. Look at this. I love them that love me. That's reciprocal. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, better than gold and choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the past of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. Man, you can go all the way down. Verse 34, blessed is the man that heareth me, for whoso findeth me findeth life, and whoso obtain fed and shall obtain favor of the Lord. All oh, my wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Find it. So how does a Christian find health? Practice the law. Do what the Bible tells you to do. How does he find wealth? He learns how to give. One time, and I've told this in other places, my kids were looking at our neighbor across the street. He had just bought a boat, a sailboat. Why in Colorado you'd buy that big boat? The end of it was it passed it down the way of his house. The front end and the back end was at the sidewalk. He got in trouble with the city. They said, that's too big to have on your property. He filed a a, a variance to have that left or he didn't win he had to get rid of it we were standing out there and my young boys said dad why don't you buy one of those boats I said you you really want me to get one they said yeah boy we could go out on a lake and we could fish and I said okay they said but dad you can't afford that I said sure I can I could go pay for it. I could get it and pay for it in a year they said how could you do that I said just quit giving to God if I just quit giving, we'd have enough money to buy that boat. I'm not joking, friend. We could, we could buy that boat. My kids looked at me and said, they're backing up like God's going to throw a lightning bolt at me. Well, Dad, what will God think if you quit giving? Well, what do you think God will think? And they both looked at me and said, we better skip the boat. <laughs> Boy, I'm glad they did because I know what God would do to me if we did that. It's been a joy over the years to meet needs and to be a blessing with the things that you have. Man, just give. You can't outgive God. Man, pay the tithe and go way beyond that. And then pursue wisdom. Could I challenge you tonight, you who are watching and you that are here? 
why don't you just sit away a little time. Here, here's a key I learned from a preacher years ago. Read one proverb every day. They're 31. So and sometimes you'll, February, you'll end up with two extra ones to read and sometimes three. Uh, but others you'll have one extra day because there'll be 30 in a month. Read one proverb every day in the last day if you have to read the extra again. You'll have read Proverbs through 12 times in one year. Now let me give you the hard one. Read five Psalms every day. I wish I could tell you I'm doing that now. I'm not. I did it for years. Read five Psalms every day. Just make preparation. When you get to Psalm 119, that's going to take more than a day. Or you're going to start early in the morning to read all the way through it. Just do those two things. You won't believe what it'll do for you in helping you to grow. You want to be healthy? Practice that. You, you want to be wealthy? Pay the tithe. You want to be wise? Just find wisdom in this book and keep reading it. Especially the seven pillars of wisdom. Do you even know what they are? Look in here and find them. And they're very precious to those that take them. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, verse 21 said. Are you healthy today? Well, you are if you love God. Are you wealthy today? You are if you give regularly. Uh, are you wise today? You are if you seek divine wisdom. Early to bed and early to rise. I think I'll do anything for you. Take these three things and learn them. Father, thank you for the message, all given in one chapter. How to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. All of us would do well to review this and see where we're at. Add a little here and a little there and draw closer to thee with health, wealth, and wisdom. Thank you for the message. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's sing an invitation hymn. I'll go back to the hymn. It's easier to open. Uh, 280. 280. Softly and tenderly. God speaks in your heart about this. You can just, where you're at while we stand, you can just bow your head and pick one. Which one? Which one should you be working on? All three? Take a little time and tell Lord, help me with this one or help me with that one. Verse number 280. Song number 280. One verse. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portal, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home. Come home, ye who are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home. Thank you, Father, for the time together tonight. Dismiss us with your blessing. I ask that you please be near to Joyce and help her through tomorrow. And I do pray again for Brian. I know they've put it past anything man could do. There wouldn't be anything now but what you could do. And I'm going to still ask. God, provide a miracle in that dear brother's life. Thank you for what you do. Dismiss us with your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen.